Hello, welcome to Big Ben Sammy TV. Ben here, thanks for tuning in. I know your time is very valuable, so thank you for uh, taking the time to check out the video. I'm talking about the Trinity here, something that seems to be very confusing to a lot of people. It was very confusing to me growing up. Being a Christian, my first uh, exposure to the Trinity is when I would pray to Jesus, um, and then I would pray to God, and then I would start to ask my parents, do I pray to Jesus or to God? And they told me they're the same. And I was like, well, are they the same or are they different? And then they told me, well, they're different. And I'm like, what? And then they, they didn't seem to be able to explain it to me. So that's kind of growing up. They just told me, well, it's, that's what the Bible says. Don't worry about it. So, of course, as a kid, you just trust your, your parents. You believe what they say. But as I got older, I really started to un wonder and, and wanted to understand what, what the Bible means by God being three and one. That's the Trinity. Uh, trying to understand the Trinity, our God, you know, our God. And first of all, just let me tell you, okay, from my discovery I'm going to share with you, God is not supposed to be understood, okay? The Trinity is not something that God wants us just to understand because He's God, and as the God that created us, we will not be able to un totally understand Him because He's God. Um, we definitely, if you read the Bible, and you do need to understand the Trinity so that you don't teach something that the Bible doesn't say because that would be called heresy. It's, he it's heresy. But, and number two, God is triune. There is a reason for it because He wants us to enjoy Him. God's triune so that we will be able to become His children. He's God the Father who's created everything. He's God the Son because we have we sinned against God. We offended Him. Adam did. The Bible said Adam sinned, so we all sinned. Um, and they had to have blood sacrifices all the way up to Jesus. He had blood, flesh and blood, which was able to be sacrificed, which was an ultimate sacrifice. The Bible says that Jesus died for everyone, okay? So now we don't, we're not, God doesn't have that offense between us. We can be brought back to God. Not only that, as the Spirit, God's the Spirit, so we can have him come into our spirit. We're, we're a tripartite man. We are three in one. So we can believe in Jesus and the spirit as the breath of God is as you know his breath is air can come into our spirit. So we have a spirit, he's spirit, we can have our spirits mingled and we can become his children. We can have his life birthed into us. So that's what the Trinity is all about, okay? We can enjoy the triune God. A lot of Christians who, you know, get confused and try to put God in a box to be able to uh, systematize the triune God, you will have a lot of headaches and problems trying to do that because he's God and we won't be able to totally understand him with our human brain, okay? So, but we, there are things that we can understand about the Trinity. That's what I want to let you know so that we don't uh, speak heresies and teach heresies. And number one, the, the Bible says that God's three and the Bible says God is one. So it's, it's just, it's hard to understand. Please don't try to comprehend it and put it in a box, okay? Because that's what I try to do and that's what messed me up. What I finally discovered and come to the conclusion um, it's just to say what the Bible says and don't say what the Bible doesn't say. That's all we need to do. And then to understand that the triune God is there for us to enjoy so that we can have God's life. Uh, we can partake of God's life and his nature. That's what First Peter says. We can partake of God's life and his nature. The Holy Spirit is the nature of God. We can get it into our spirit. Okay, that's why he's three and one. What does the Bible say about the Trinity? And what? why did they even have to, why did, why did the, the early Christians have to figure this out? And when you look at 325 uh, AD, there was the Council of Nicaea. 451 was the Council of Chalcedon. I'm going to talk about these two councils. And the reason Christians had these councils was because after, when Jesus was there, it was easy to know what Jesus wanted. You could talk to him. His disciples were with Jesus, so they wrote down what he said, so they were able to explain to people. Once they were gone, though, by about two, 300, people were starting to have to interpret for themselves what the disciples manuscripts were saying about what Jesus taught okay it was all new at that time um, it was different than what the Jews had been practicing all the way up to that point it was Jesus it was a fulfillment of what he wanted to do in the Old Testament so it was kind of a little shift so people didn't really understand it so there were people coming in reading the Bible teaching things the Bible didn't say they might have did it not knowingly because you, you, you didn't really understand at that time what the Bible we had interpreted at the time also, you have to understand there is there is a devil, God's enemy, wants to lead people astray from what God wants us to, to follow. So at that time, a lot of these groups, they were misled themselves, uh, or misunderstood, or they were purposely trying to lead people astray from God's truth. So that's why these councils came about. The councils, so we can't really understand or put the Trinity in a box, but the Christians at those times wanted to say, what does the Bible say? At least we can say that. We can't totally explain the Trinity because it goes beyond our, our human understanding but we can at least say what the Bible says so what the Trinity and these two councils they were fighting against some heresy 
uh, that was being taught. So the first council, uh, the Council of Nicaea, had to uh, combat Arian. He was a guy who was teaching, uh, you know, he was teaching heresies. And the second, the Council of Chalcedon uh, in, four, in 451 had to uh, contend with the Monophysites. They also had some heretical teachings. So um, just to make it simple, they, it had to do with Jesus. And they were saying something that the Bible didn't say, that Jesus was just man, more of a man focused on his man side and that he was not God all the way, which today modern day Jehovah's Witnesses do the same thing. They, they interpret John 1.1 uh, 1, 1 as, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God, they add a, a God, not just not God. So that's what they did at that time. So the Christians got together and said, no, this is not what the Bible says. Jesus was 100% God, 100% man. We can't separate that. And he was he was God in the Trinity, the same as the Father, the same as the Spirit. You can't separate them or make them less or more than each other. So that's not what the Bible said, so that was considered heresy. The other thing they were saying uh, in the other council was that they are fighting against God being just the Spirit and not being a man, so he didn't really feel the pain of the cross. Uh, in the Quran, the Muslims say Jesus actually escaped the cross. There's a story that he didn't really even feel the pain. He didn't even he tricked the people and didn't and he wasn't on the cross. He put like Judas or someone else on the cross, or Satan or somebody. I can't really remember, but supposedly. But he, the point is, is that that's not what the Bible says. They're trying to lower his manness or however you want to say it. But um, so that's what the Bible doesn't say. So the Bible doesn't say that Jesus and is is either too much of the son or too much of the of the spirit you can't say that the bible doesn't say that god is in heaven and then jesus is on the throne and the spirit is the spirit and that they're separate three separate guys it does say that those three things are there so that's why we know that he is three but you can't say they're separate gods that god exists alone in heaven jesus exists alone they're, they're still all the same person they're all the same they're the same god okay like I said, you can't understand it. It's for you to enjoy. That's why he's three and one. And also probably just to keep reminding us that he's God and we're not, okay? And you can't say that he was God and then when he came down as a man, he no longer was God and the Father in heaven. And then he became the spirit today that he's only the spirit. You can't say that either because you're making three separate gods again. As long as you understand that even though he was in three different places, he was still all in the same place. He was still all in the other places. Then that's fine. But if you can't, once you start saying that he was in three separate places and didn't exist in the other places, that's not what the Bible says. That's heresy. Um, I like some examples they give, like the electrical power plant. Uh, there's the conductor, and then there's the electricity. Um, that's a cool to see how God is the Father. He's the Creator. The Son is like the conductor, and the Spirit is the, the Spirit is the energy for Him to get to us to turn on the lights. But that's still heresy if you're not careful. If you don't understand that He still is all the same. He's the, still the same God, though. He's not three one God with three different titles, because then you're just that you're confusing. That's another thing. You can't confuse the three people. They are three separate. Got three separate. You know, the Son, the the Father, the Son, the Spirit are, are three separate. The Bible shows distinctly they're separate, but they are still one. You can't confuse though that just saying like it's just one person with three different names. That is also heretical. Okay, you got to be careful. It's just. That's why I'm trying to tell you, you can't put them in a box. Anytime you try to put them in a box, I went to Wheaton College, I took some, for my master's, took some theological classes, and some of my professors, I, you know, I, I needed, even at that time I was confused, I needed help. And they tried to make it real tight and packaged for me, saying, you know, God is God the Father, there's God the Son, there's God the Spirit, they're one God, you can't say God the Son is God and the Father, you can't say God the Son is God the Spirit. So I thought, okay, I can explain that. That's, that's easy. But then when you read the Bible, it's like, what about Isaiah 9, 6? Unto us a child is born, and he shall be called Everlasting Father. Okay? Unto us a child is born, a child is born, and he shall be called Everlasting Father. So the Bible says the, the child is the father, right? Then there's another verse that messed me up. 1 Corinthians 4, 15, 45 says, The last Adam... A talistized became the life-giving spirit or a life-giving spirit the last Adam which is Jesus became the spirit so is Jesus the spirit or is he the son right that word became is actually a talistized which I, I didn't realize that until I looked at different translations but at mostly if you talk to anyone who knows English grammar 
that became needs to be there and in most translations it is because they know it's supposed to be there so but a lot of people leave it out because a lot of christians don't understand they thought they tried to package it tight and then that messed them up so they don't like that verse because then they can't explain the trinity and make it real tight the way they want and also uh john seven thirty nine, i think it is says the spirit was not yet what does that mean jesus it had not, this says the spirit was not yet some versions say the spirit was not yet given they tried to translate in different ways but some translations according to the greek would say the spirit was not yet which to me if it was just that one verse but since there's other verses that god always it seems to me throws those in there so that we can't systematize him and put him in a box but we can't say certain things that's what it, it's with the trinity you just need to know we can't say certain things we can say we can say the bible does say he's three and he's one he's there's three three he's the father son and spirit i'm not gonna say he's three gods he's just three but he's also one so he's three separate persons he's a father the son and the spirit but you can't but you can't confuse them and just say he's one but he is one they're all the same person but you can't confuse them and say that they're not three okay so you can that's what the bible says he's three and he's one he's one and he's three for us to enjoy him that's the main part we should understand is that he's the father the creator he's god there's no one above him he's always been here he knows everything he's the strongest he's the son he came as a human being yet he was still 100 percent god he died on the cross his, because he's 100 percent god his blood actually covers all man's sins past present and future and then he died and he resurrected and he's the life-giving spirit now he gives us life he's the holy spirit he's the spirit of god he's the spirit of christ he's the spirit as the spirit he can come inside of us and make his home in our heart um and we can enjoy him we can become his ch real children the children of god so you can say that but you can't say that he's separate he's three separate that he or he's three different in different times or that he's just one and confused the three so just just understand that that's why we don't want to say things the bible doesn't say or that can be heresy and we want to understand that the triune god the trinity is for us to know that we can know god we can become his children we can enjoy him we can enjoy him because he's three in one okay just like a watermelon if god was just a watermelon you couldn't enjoy it but because he got processed and kind of cut up and the spirit is the food we can take him in the bible says god's our bread how can he be bread to us how can he be food to us um because he is the spirit we can we can have him come into us now he's he's made himself processed so we can eat him that's what he wants he wants us to enjoy him as our food uh ecclesiastes says that we all have a vacuum in our heart a vacuum in a side of us something that cannot be filled the whole world couldn't fill that vacuum that hole only the spirit we are made to let that spirit which is an eternal element of god that can now come into us and can fill that hole so the trinity is for us to enjoy that's the only way we can be satisfied is by letting god's life come into us that's why we were made a three-part person so that we can enjoy our three-part our three-part god thank you for tuning in i hope that helps